There are people who think that yoga and asanas are of the devil. By definition, and this is part of the debate because people are saying, no, by definition, these stretches and these ways are doing this thing. And I think that someone who... Hey guys, thanks for watching Pastor Mark Reacts. Today we're answering the question, can Christians do yoga? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of yoga as being satanic? Well, if you haven't, and I certainly haven't, it seems that there are plenty of people who do. There are people who think that yoga and asanas are of the devil. Let's start with the pastor of a mega church in the United States who preaches to his congregation that yoga, with all its contortions called asanas, is evil because Hinduism is demonic. Then there's a Catholic priest in North Ireland who's on record to have said, if you do yoga, you're headed for the kingdom of darkness and will soon be drawn towards Satan and the fallen angels. There was quite an uproar to the priest's views from the local Hindu community who asked the Pope to discipline the priest. Nothing has come of that yet. And perhaps it's because the Vatican's chief exorcist holds a similar view. He told the London Telegraph that doing yoga leads to a belief in Hinduism and that all Eastern religions are based on a false belief of reincarnation. Now the father concluded by saying, practicing yoga is satanic, it leads to evil, just like reading Harry Potter. Wow, oh, I'm not a fan of Harry Potter, so I may be spared some of the torments of hell, but I am a practitioner of yoga, and as a bhakti yogi, I'm also identified as being a Hindu. But I still feel safe from going to hell because upon receiving a Bhagavad Gita, Pope John Paul II had said, I understand something about the deep spiritual concepts which are upheld in India, and I appreciate them. I've heard about Krishna, and Krishna is great. Unquote. There's a couple things bubbling under this. So one of them is the question of exclusivity and inclusivity in regard to religion. We live in a culture that, based on postmodernity, relativistic ideas of the way that we function in regard to epistemology and how we know things and what our theological conclusions are, we tend to believe that all beliefs, all theologies, all religions are equal and they lead to heaven and just people depending on where they live will believe different things and there's you know the metaphor of the elephant and you're grabbing things when you're blind and you don't know what you're holding and all of that. So there's a conversation about the exclusivity of Christianity and I think Christianity is pretty clear that it is the only way. Jesus taught this, you know, um, that uh, I'm the only way to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. The apostles preached nobody, there's no other name under heaven by which men shall be saved other than Jesus. So that's a pretty clear conversation. And so that would lead to a conversation um, about Hindu ideas versus Christian ideas and uh, and where those things clash. And reincarnation is certainly one of those things, views of God, you know, uh, one God versus many, you know, all of that is an important conversation. Then there's the question of yoga and Harry Potter and these kind of things, which is which is a second kind of piece of this, this conversation. So the first one, I think Christianity is pretty clear. It's like Jesus is the only way. Now we're in a conversation with world religions. What about Judaism? What about Islam? What about Hindu? Hinduism? What about Buddhism? Can you, you know, do, do you go to heaven if you believe those things? And the New Testament is pretty clear. Jesus is the only way. And then there's this question about the practice and methodology of, of yoga or, you know, um, uh, depending on your version of it, how far you go with it, I would think would be the Christian response because there's a certain aspect of society that looks at it as stretching as certain stretches that you do in order to be healthy, um, in order to keep your body healthy. And, you know, I always think of the <clears throat> uh, story in these conversations in uh, in Second Kings, where you have this this guy um, who who is part of this other religion, and he comes to know God, uh, the God of Israel, and he uh, has to go in with the people because he's a servant of one of the pagan guys and he has to go in to the temple and do this thing with them. 
And he's like, is it okay if I go? He asked the prophet is it, of, of Israel, is it okay if I go and do this as long as I'm praying to you know Yahweh? And the answer is yes. And there's this piece where there's certain methodologies that Christianity's point is to redeem things. <clears throat> and I think there's versions of this, you know, where you you take stretches. You know, one of the one of the neglected things in in uh in Christianity in the West over the last couple hundred years has been spiritual practices. If you go read Richard Foster's books, uh uh, celebration of discipline or you read Dallas Willard or other spiritual writers they talk about the idea of meditation is actually a Christian discipline if you go back and read uh, so many different segments of Christianity for the last 2,000 years meditation and prayer and solitude have been massive ways Christians have focused in actually connecting with Jesus it's just a matter of filling your your mind and your heart to re with reflections on Christ as you literally meditate. Meditation is a thing. It's not to be hijacked as a, well, meditation is by definition belongs to Eastern, you know, ideologies and religions and things that aren't Christianity. And that's why Christians stay away from it because they don't want to be seen as people who meditate. But it's like literally been a part of Christian history. It should. What are you actually filling that time with? Christianity has this beautiful ethic of redeeming the things of the world for the sake of Christ. And, you know, people say these same arguments about, you know, Christmas trees and, you know, we shouldn't use Christmas trees. And, you know, Easter was a pagan festival. It's like, yeah. And then Christianity came along and redeemed them into this beautiful thing where, yeah, we can use these things to point to Jesus. And in the same way, I think in someone's life, they can use stretching and health uh, like that to redeem their, their even their mind and their time and their heart and be focused on Jesus. I, there's people who say, well, yeah, but there's a certain, you know, they're letting demons in by how they're stretching. I think that's a whole um, question of what you're putting your heart and mind to while you're doing these stretches because there's certain times I might drop my phone and I might bend down in a certain way and what happened to the demon run up me? Oh no, I got it, you know. It's like, what are you spending your time, energy, heart on as you're meditating, as you're stretching, as you're doing this versus is uh, by definition, and this is part of the debate because people say, no, by definition, these stretches in these ways are doing this thing. And I think that someone who knows Jesus and is using that to connect to the Holy Spirit, pray, meditate, focus on the scriptures, uh, stretch to be healthy. You know, one of the things that also neglected in modern Christianity, we, we talk about this in Village of the, the, the four T's that God asks us to steward in our life, our time, our treasure, our talent. And the last one, which we <clears throat> never talk about is the tent. <clears throat> and what we mean by that is like, you know, Paul in First Corinthians talks about the idea that you have a body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Use it for the glory of God. And it's like, how often do Christians eat terrible things, don't care about their health. They all sit around and you know, whatever. And it's like, well, you know, you, you know, one thing we should be against is stretching and staying healthy. It's like, well, those, you know, yoga people. It's like, how about you get healthy? You know, how about you recognize that being healthy is actually part of serving God with your body and we neglect it and we sit around, we don't care about our body, but then we judge all these people. It's just silliness that Christians are focused. It's the ethic of Matthew 23, where Jesus says, you know what you're really good at? You're good at straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. You're good at focusing on the minors and missing the major things. How can you be focused on, well, and then losing this big thing over here and totally neglecting it? Don't do that. Redeem these things for the sake of Christ. That's part of what we're supposed to do. Jeremiah 29 says, you know what you're supposed to do? Here's what I'd rather you do. Israel, you're in Babylon. Here's what I'd rather you do. Instead of running away and hoping the rapture happens and the church just disappears from the world, here's what I'm asking you to do. Buy a house, plant a garden, and fight for the good and pray for the good of the city. You're part of a culture. Don't run from it. Lean into it and redeem it for the sake of Christ. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you put your notifications on so you know when we drop these videos. And please comment underneath this video telling me the kinds of things you want me to react to. Thanks for watching.